Reading this morning, Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captive to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. Oh, what a day. Today is our, our word for today, of course, is joy. It's been a... a a joyful thing to go through this Advent season with, with hope and peace and joy. Um, so looking today at how are we to have that joy through times of adversity. I remember when, when Chris and I were first married and um, we went to a, a little church in South Dakota, and which, by the way, just this is just a little aside. Um, this church was belonged to a denomination. It was called United Church of Christ, which this church used to be. Um, but at that point, I had never heard of that denomination. So there is no way I ever would have set foot inside that door, except that someone invited us. You know, I had a cousin and he that was going there, and he invited us to come. And so we went, and we found it to be a really sweet little church and, and place where where we fit very nicely and, and could grow in our faith. But in this church, then, we, we became friends with an older couple that was there, and um, the woman then was diagnosed with breast cancer. And the thing that really stood out to me, and it's something that I will remember about her for all of my life, because, in fact, she did pass away from the cancer, but she kept that, that joyfulness in her spirit. She didn't let it get her down. You know, we'd go and we'd visit, and she could still be, um, she could laugh and, and share that feeling of joy with the people that came to her. And, and she had something that, that I really admired, and maybe I'd never really seen that before in my life, seeing someone who really embodied joy in the midst of, of adversity. And so I can ask if you all have seen or known people like that, and, and it's like I can say, if you've been a part of this church for any length of time, then I know you have because we have people in this church who also exhibit that same joy in the midst of trial and adversity. You know, the Bible tells us that we are to rejoice always. Rejoice always. It's like, well, how, how in the world do we do that? A lot depends on how do we define the word joy? What do we, what, what do we mean when we talk about joy? Is it always just the exuberance? And we look in the dictionary and it speaks of, of like an exuberant happiness and gaiety and cheerfulness and, and all this kind of stuff, upbeat things. Well, nobody can keep that up all the time. I've, I've not seen any studies, but I'm willing to bet that there's not a single person on the planet that has ever lived that, who has had joy for their entire lifetime without any adversity. Maybe the one who... who dies at birth, but even there, there probably was some challenge. Um, so I, I really doubt it. I think every life experiences hardship. And so to keep up that, that joyfulness and exuberance, happiness, is just not possible for us. But yet, because of Christ and what he has done in our hearts, we have something that cannot be taken away. We have a joy that is much more deep because joy isn't just, it isn't just an emotion. It isn't just a feeling that we have. Rather, it's a state of being. It's something that's deep down inside of us because of what God has done for us, what Christ has given to us in the very depth of our being. Now, Jesus had told his disciples on that night when he was gathered with them before he suffered. He was talking about his upcoming death and all and saying that, you know, that they were going to have sorrow for a while. But remember what he said, that they would see him again, that it would be okay a few days later. He said, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. And so we have a joy that we've received from Christ 
from the Lord that's deep inside that doesn't depend on our circumstances. So no matter what we're going through, we can still rejoice. We can still um, praise the Lord because we know what God has done and given to us. So this Advent season, it's interesting as we've been reading the various lectionary texts. Now these are, as you probably know, lectionary texts being the the prescribed readings for the day, and they go in a three-year cycle. We don't always um, read from the Old Testament as much as we have this, this year. We've read um, Isaiah 64, and then Isaiah 40, and now Psalm 126. But there's a common theme in all of these passages of Scripture, and they're all talking about the exile, whether the prophet is talking about the um, preparing for the exile um, and the exile, you remember, is the time when, when the people, particularly the, the nation of Judah, had been overrun and carried away captive into Babylon. And it was probably the very worst time and most painful event in their history after they'd been released from slavery in Egypt anyway. Um, a very difficult and painful time. But in those scriptures that we were reading, you know, they were being reminded that hold firm because... God is still with you. He has not left you. He will not leave. God's love and his promises are still there. You will come through this time and it will be better. It will come to an end. So in Psalm 126, we see that the songs of joy, as this is now in the past, the, the exile is over and they've been restored to the land. God has brought them back. You know, it's, life is not perfect at that point. They still need, you know, praying for God to restore their fortunes. It's, um, they're still going to go through trials and hardship, but they've come through that really difficult time, and so they rejoice and sing songs of praise. And their mouths are filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. This is a song of ascents, meaning it's one of those that they would sing when they go up to Jerusalem on, for the, one of those annual uh, holiday festivals that they have. But another prophet also spoke about this time of the exile, uh, prophesying during the time of the exile is um, Habakkuk, and our ladies Bible study is going to be looking at that for this Tuesday when we gather, and I was having a look, and it's like, you know, he also was, was asking the Lord, he said, well, you know, why would you use these, these horrible people of the Babylonians to come and, and punish your, your children? And God said, yeah, okay, that's what we need to do, but the Babylonians will get theirs too in the end. But at the end of Habakkuk's prayer here, he prays then a prayer of, of trust, total trust in God and in his mercy and goodness. But at the end of this prayer, he says these words. He says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. And how in the world? He's talking about when there's total economic collapse, when, when everything is so bad, the cupboards are completely bare, the crops have all failed, there's nothing. Yet I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord and be joyful in God my Savior. It's because he knows he can trust God. He has learned along the way to trust God and be faithful to him. So how do we today know that we can also have that joy in adversity? We know that, I mean, either you're going through adversity right now or it's coming down the road. I can promise you that just about. Um, and we know in our, in our world, it seems we're heading into, into more and more chaos and trials. Um, so there's adversity. How do we know we're going to hold firm and hang on through that? Well, first off, it's important that we know if you've come to Christ, have you come to Christ in the beginning and, and taken him as your savior because that's where it starts. God is the source of our joy. He's the one who gives that gift. You know, when we have that, when we have committed our lives to Christ, when we've received him as our savior, then we know that we have received the forgiveness of sins, we've received that gift 
of eternal life. We know that the Holy Spirit is with us, that God will never, ever leave us or forsake us. He's always there. And so that's what is the anchor in our souls that holds us steady. Yes, I think people outside of the church, people who don't know Christ, can have, be people of good character and find strength within themselves. But without Christ, you don't have what you need to hold firm through everything. We know that God is there for us and we can stand firm no matter what comes our way and we can have that joy, that joy that is never, ever taken away. It's deep inside of us. It gives us the strength that we need. But if we have for other ways that we can build on our faith and strengthen our faith so that we'll know that it's there and for us in times of adversity, um, looking back on your own history, look back and remember and think, you know, how has God helped me in the past? You know, when I went through a difficult time back when, God was there. He helped me through that. And, you know, if you're one that keeps a journal, go back and read through your journal and, and sometimes you can be surprised. Oh, I didn't remember that thing. And we see that over and over in the scriptures, how they, they repeat their history. They tell it over and over and over again about remembering, you know, God who brought us out of Egypt, our God who brought it, led us out of Egypt and, and slavery and such. They tell it over and over again so that they can remind themselves and to remind the next generations and make sure everybody remembers that God is faithful. You know, we, we did some of this a, a few weeks ago here in the church on our last Wednesday in November. We had a time for storytelling and remembering some of the stories from this church's history. And it was a really rich night. I, I really enjoyed hearing those things of how God has been at work in this church for years and years, as long as any of us here can remember and we know even before that. So have a look. Think about Look back in your own life and see those places where God has helped you in the past and, and then hold firm to that. Remind yourself of that so you can remember. You, you can trust God. He's always going to be there for you and he will carry you through this time of adversity as well. Another thing we can do to help strengthen our faith is just on a daily basis being, being mindful of the little things, saying thanks to God for the little things that the little blessings along the way, the little things that go right, even sometimes just getting up in the morning and having breath in your lungs, give thanks to God for that. Because that builds an attitude in us of, of dependence on God, remembering that every little thing that we receive from, is from God, and it's a gift. And so we have thankfulness. So we're not just, you know, we don't want to be those ones that just only cry out to God when times get tough and ignore Him all the rest of the time. It's like, no. Build your faith on a daily basis by, by praising the Lord for the little things that you see in life because all those little things can add up. And again, if you're journaling, um, those things become more apparent when you write them down. And then lastly, something we can do, and this is something I, I hadn't really noticed in this passage of Scripture before. or It struck me a different way. It says, Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. So it says to me, even though it's a tough time, maybe things are bad and you're feeling really down, keep going, keep on working, keep carrying that seed out to the field and planting. Maybe you haven't seen a crop, maybe the crops have failed in a while, but keep on going even in the midst of tears. It's not a time to just lay down and say, woe is me. Keep on moving, one foot in front of the other. We don't give up because we know that God is faithful. Keep planting those seeds because one of them, it's going to sprout up. You're going to have a bountiful harvest. And so I think this is a word for us today, not to let go, but to keep on going forward no matter what. There's so many folks that, that end up giving up and we want to come alongside folks and encourage them and say, no, don't give up. God is still there. God hears your cries. He knows what you need, and he'll be present there. And so this morning, when we think about joy and adversity, we have a gift, a precious gift that has been given to us. 
that can never be taken away in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we know Christ in our hearts, we have something precious that will carry us through no matter what. Yes, troubled times come. They come to every life and everybody. But God is able to carry us through and see us on the other side. So would you pray with me this morning? Dear Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your strength on the days when we don't have strength. We thank you for the joy that you can plant in our hearts on those days when we don't feel the least bit joyful. But Father, you are always there and your mercies are new every morning. Help us, Lord, to continue to grow in our faith, to strengthen the weakened knees and the feeble arms, and to encourage one another. I thank you for this body of believers and how we can come together and encourage each other. Keep us in your care, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.